Let's unmute this. What's happening, everybody? All right. So let's talk a little bit about 123 Low Board and what they got going on now. They got some some things in the, uh, the mobile, right? So they got some things in the mobile. We're going to show the mobile app, and here it is right here. And uh, let me see if I can get this to work without showing some pertinent information. You hit the more button down here, right, right here. All right, and then you see these things here. You got rate check, documents, um, this profit calculator. When you click on it, you can check out the profit on a load pretty easy. I don't know if Snowlord, if, if you use this before or not, um, but you just click on the miles here, right? You click on that, and you put in the miles of the load. So let's say the load's a thousand miles, and let's say you're getting two and a quarter for it, right? You put whatever you're getting in there, and that's going to tell you twenty-two fifty on the rate. Um, you put your miles per gallon in there, and how much it costs you for fuel. Now you can put in there fuel discount and stuff like that if you want, or you can add it down lower, which I'll show you that. But let's say that with your discount, you're getting two eighty. All right, it's going to give you your $400 fuel cost. You're going to come down here. So far, that's $18.50, right? It's $1.85 a mile. Now, if you got toll costs, you can put them in there. Dispatch fee. So dispatch fee, you could say, is your contract fee. So if you're on a 20%, you know, 80-20, you'd put 20 in there. And subtract that fee, and it shows you that load. You would profit $1,400, $1.40 a mile, and that's with your fuel and everything out of the load. Simple. Right? You could have that open, bam. You know what you got, right? And these other fees, these other fees right here, you could put in other things <clears throat> um, to let you know. So if you had a daily cost um, of $300, let's say, and this is a two day load, you could put your $600 in here. And you would know you'd profit 800 bucks for those two days, which would be 400 a day above and beyond what you need of your daily rate, right? So if you do cost per day, you could stick that in the other and you would know exactly, hey, if I'd done this load, I'd have $800 on top of what I need at 80 cents a mile um, profit, total profit, right? So that is a cool feature. Um, anybody ever use that? Uh, that feature of 123 load board? And uh, let me go to another one, but I got to cover up the screen because it's going to show you all kinds of good stuff up there uh, that, you know, we're not going to put out on, on uh, the internet, right? We're not going to do that. Uh, but has anybody used that feature of 123 load board, uh, this profit calculator? So that's, that's pretty cool because you can put all the kinds of stuff in there, right? You can put, you know, if you had toll cost of 50 bucks, you can put that in there. Now you're down to 750, right? So if your cost per day was 250 a day and then you put 500 there for two days, then you know your total profit is going to be 850 on that load um, above and beyond what you need. Uh, that way you can keep track of these loads and see you know how profitable they are uh, for your business now I'm gonna take this phone and I'm gonna hit the uh, X button up there and then we can go to other things on it like rate check right here's the rate check uh, demonstration of it I can pull this up here like this now you see rate check then you can pick van right and you can pick uh, Springfield, Missouri, and that'll come up, and then you could pick uh, Indianapolis, or let's say Columbus, because we know some people that likes to go to Columbus. So you start typing it in, and then you can come down here and pick Columbus, Ohio, and it's going to say the average rate is $1.73 to two twenty-two a mile, right? Yeah, I think we locked up. Yeah, I think that feed locked up. See, it's got uh, Springfield, Missouri. 
average rate is 173 to 222. Hey, we got a message from Circus Boy. Um, 222 miles, dollar eighty two is the average. And if you took that load, it'll give you kind of what your estimated revenue would be after your fuel cost comes out, right, for the rate check. So that's got some cool features there. Um, plus, you know, if you're thinking about getting out there in the spot market, doing that thing, you can use that code right up there at the top. Uh, 48035, get that whole premium edition of 123 for 35 bucks. Now, if you don't have the MC number yet, DOT number yet, they're only only load board's going to let you get on there, and you just tell them, hey, you watch this channel, you watch Big Rig Radio Network, and you're thinking about getting your own authority, but you want to do a little research first. So 35 bucks a month for a few months to do your research is priceless. You can't put a price on that, and it's, that's that's cheap way to find out if it is worth it for you to do that, depending on the loads where you run and all that good stuff, right? Um, Eugene Waller says, uh, let's put Eugene up on the screen. Boom, you're headed to the broadcast, Eugene. He says, so how are you adjusting to the new phone? Pretty good. Pretty good, Eugene. I'm, I'm doing all right. You know what I'm saying? You know, we're not doing bad. Let's uh, let's go in here and let's apply that so now everybody can see uh, most of your comment there, right? You can see your comment because we'll, we'll move over and uh, put you on the gray shirt background. You know what I mean? The Thunder Funding shirt background um, yeah so the, the new phone uh, is we're doing good with it right it's a awesome piece of equipment for multitasking uh, especially in trucking you got one Eugene I think are you the one that bought one too um, there's been a few few guys that went and, and got one uh, to test it out uh, I'm going to turn the dual screen on. This is it right here. This is the phone. See, this is the phone. We're going to hit the little turn on button. And, you know, what I like about it is um, the dual the dual screen and the multitasking capability of the phone. Because we could take... Um, a load board and then we can also take another board let's say we want to look at a uh, yeah let's pick a somebody else's load board right let's pick somebody else's load board on this phone. Alright, so I'll stick it in front of the camera over here with the two sides going. Alright, so there you go. So you'd have um, I got one, two, three on this side of the, of the phone and I could search for loads and I could click on a load. That load is no longer available. Right, so I'll just hit that button there. And this load is available, and you can search through it. Um, you can do all your good stuff, right? Or you can come over here, and you can search through this load board, right? And that way you can have two boards on there at the same time. Um, Rich, the Italian Stallion, see? I was telling Rich about some loads um, in a certain area. Uh, where he's at um, we went over those and uh, yeah some pretty good stuff right rich pretty good stuff if I take and put his put a town in there um, I 
I gotta try to remember how he spelled it. Um, Well, Rich, I can't I can't spell that. I'm also going to put in something else. Uh, I'm going to put in uh, Albany, New York. And within 100 or so miles of there, there's like 1,100 loads. Okay? And uh, we will show those. So... I got it right here and as you can see here's some dollar amounts um, that these loads are posted at and so forth and so forth uh, depending on where they're going and what they are and these are all long loads here right so if you get down to the smaller money uh, and of course, you can bid on this stuff and get it higher, of course. Like right here. 950 to go 394 about 241 a mile. Here's 241. Here's one of those I was telling you about, Rich. Like this on 123. Scranton, PA to Southfield, Connecticut. 900 bucks for the 200 miles. That's 435 a mile. Right? So why mess with all this other garbage? That's a dollar fifty, dollar thirty. Y'all seen it scrolling through, right? All this other garbage that they're trying to peddle on everybody. Um, look at that load. Why wouldn't you just take that load, right? Because you're gonna make a whole lot more money. Because um, look at this load. Why go all the way to Tennessee if you don't live there for the same money that you can go in three hours, right? Work smarter, not harder. Um, so we'll find another one, like right down here. Here's a New Jersey to Virginia, 377 miles, 230 miles, 870 bucks, right? Why not do that run? Um, and so forth, right? You can come on down here and look at all these different deals. Like here's one. If you wanted to go into Brooklyn, um, you could go for 137 miles, 800 bucks. But you know you could probably negotiate it and get them up to a thousand bucks on that, right? We, we all know you can negotiate it. Um, and so forth. So, you can do that and negotiate. Now, there's other load boards that, you know, I was talking to, uh, to Rich about um, that we could go look at. Uh, like, here's another one. $785 for 200 miles. Hicksville, New York to York, PA. Here's a $750 for 150 miles. And, and these are all negotiable, right? Um, right there. $497 miles, 750 bucks. And here's a guy that's got one down here. Coming out of Connecticut, back to Watertown, $752.67. Well, you know, if I'm in this area, I'm going to take this one before I take that one. Because I'm going half the miles for the same money. Right? So you can sit here and look around and see, you know, all kinds of good stuff, right? Here's another one. 95 miles. $700. People might not want to go to Newburgh, New York. But you know what? The people that run that area and live in that area, like the Italian Stallion, he ain't going to mind doing that. Like MT Fuel Corp, he'll run these all day long, folks. He'll run them all day long and on Sunday. For 700 bucks or more, because he'll try to talk them back to 100, 200 bucks in there, maybe 300. Um, there's another one. 100 miles, there you go. They're all over the place. 100 miles, 675. They're everywhere over there. Right? Um, they're everywhere. Those types of loads are everywhere. Uh, so that just goes to show you, right? Uh, Southbound J won't go up there and run that, see? Southbound J, he says, keep that, baby, keep it. So you're going to keep it. And remember, the mighty fine folks at 123 Load Board, right up top. You want to try it out? There's your code. 35 bucks, premium plus, whole thing. Can't beat the price. You got 
rate check, you have the uh, load calculator, right? You get the load calculator so you can check your you, how much you're going to make on that profit after that. And you can even put in there, um, oh, I guess, yes, Rich, that was one, two, three. Uh, you know, so you get all that stuff, right? All that, 35 bucks. You can go on these other ones. Truck stop, dad, now them, they're not going to give you nothing at 35 bucks. You're going to get the bare minimum. You won't be able to do rate shit. You won't be able to do anything, right? You won't be able to do anything. Uh, it's the bare bones. You can look for loads, you know, call them, but it's not going to give you all that stuff. It's not going to give you the credit reports and all that stuff like 123 does for that price. Uh, to get everything like that on those other boards, it's going to cost you over 100 bucks. A month. Uh, so, there you go. And they're always, they're innovators. They're always making this better, a better product. You got document stuff in there, document scanning and all that good stuff. Um, you know, all that's in there for that price. What's up, Red Raider? What's going on? Rich says, that was one, two, yes, that's one, two, three. See, Rich, look, bang, change cameras on you. You like that? Just change cameras on you. Here's one, two, three right here. Right? Going through all these little short runs just to see what's going on with them, you know? And then once you get past the posted mile stuff, then it's going to get down to the um, stuff that's not posted, right? These guys... All these loads here, you just call up and you negotiate, right? You negotiate. Over here, what's going on over here is Convoy, I don't understand what, what they get by doing this. Convoy and Uber are starting to do bundling. What what are they? Are they, are they part of, you know... American Pickers, they're bundling. Are they taking after Frank? Frank Fritz, right? He bundles, right? Everybody watch that show? He's the bundler. They're starting to bundle. So they're taking a load, and then they're taking another load in that area, and then it's going somewhere else, and they're bundling them together. So you can't just click on the one and go or, or bid on the one. It's bundled. So you got to do the bundle. Well, what if you don't want to do the bundle? I don't know. I don't know. Have you noticed that Snorlord and Southbound J and all that, especially like on Uber? You know, they'll have, oh, and they bundle a load now. And you're like, well, I'd rather have that first load. I really don't want that second part of the bundle. So you don't even click on it. Because you don't want a bundle, you know? You seen that, Snorlord? You seen it? Uh, Southbound J, you notice that? The bundling effect, right? Right, I could show you a bundle. Let me see if I can find this bundle. This bundle that they made is illegal. It's an illegal bundle. Um, I doubt it's still on there. So let me let me clear out that one there and bring up, I believe, the culprit of the um, load that is no way possible you could do it by the bundle. Uh, which kind of cracks me up. All right, it cracks me up. See, this one, two, three load board is every time you get new loads, it refreshes. Um, so it's refreshing on me. Uh, let me see if I can find a bundle. All right, here's a bundle, but this isn't the right one. Um, and I know somebody didn't take that bundle. And if they did, there's no way they could do it. Impossible. M impossible bundle. Um, let me see if I can go somewhere else and try to get it. See if I can find that bundle. Yeah, it's a sneaky way, right? It, it's a sneaky way to try to take some stuff that, you know, I don't know if it's a way to move the cheaper load or something. Um, you know? I don't know. So anyway, um, 
I can't find it. They they must they might have took it off, or or something. But it's not on there. No idea. We'll look one more time, see if we can find it. Nope, can't find it. I could check on the computer too. Then we could pull up that screen. Yeah, Starlord, I don't know. I don't know if we can call them up and say, hey, you know, how is this really legal? Um, you know, how, how do you get to that? Let me... I'm sorting through here trying to find this bundle thing. I wish they had a button, right? It says show me all the bundles, you know. Uh, it's taking too long to load. Let me go to their website. See if we can bring up their website in in the bundle. Um, let me go to load search. Scroll it over here. Van. Search. All right, let's search for it. Let's search and see if they have I'll know the I'll know the bundle when I see it because of the price <laughs> I don't see it they might have they might have got rid of it um, nope it's not that one it's not that one all right, basically, anyway, the way it was uh, that they had it on there, it was like a load going, uh, picking up at, let's say, 2.30 in the afternoon, all right? And it was delivering at 23.55 at night. And then the bundle part was 140 miles away, picking up at um, 9 o'clock in the morning and then going, you know, like 400 miles or something down the road delivering, um, let's say, that you know, that night. Well, you can't get your 10-hour break in there. there. There's no 10-hour break in there, and you can't do an 8-2 split. Made no sense. Made no sense. You know, what, are you going to get to the place early? And then, you know, you can't move your truck, but are they going to let you sleep in a dock or something? Um, we all know that's not going to work, right? We all know that don't work. Um, but that's what they were doing. Um, DL, we're going we're gonna to cover that here in a second. We'll cover that here in a second. Um, let's see, 12th. Thirteenth. See, there's one bundle, and it's hard to do that. It's hard to do the bundle. Um, they do have it listed as a bundle, so I'm gonna scroll through real fast and see. I don't see it. Anyway, let's talk about this question right here. This question right here. Does leasing a truck and hiring a driver to drive it make business sense? Well, you can make you can make money doing it, but there's a downfall, right? Um, one, they're driving your your piece of equipment. Um, 
and whatever they do to it, you're going to have to fix it when you turn that lease truck in. So if they're if they're in the inside of that truck and they mess it up or they leave it filthy, then you know how much is the detail shop going to charge you to clean it all up? Now, if they leave stuff broken in there or damage on the outside, you can't turn that damage into um, you know. You know what I'm saying? Can't turn that into the insurance company. You're gonna have to pay for it out of your own pocket. Uh, so there is that downfall. Uh, it can be profitable now. The only bad thing is, is you could do full maintenance leases, right? So you ain't got to worry about all the maintenance of the truck brakes and all that stuff. But the problem you have is a lot of exposure uh, DL. So which means is, if you do let's say four lease trucks and you put four drivers in them, uh, if you lose two of the drivers, how long does it take you to re? re Plenish those drivers in those seats and can you how much can you afford to pay how many months can you go if you can't find a driver in those seats before you run out of money right so that's what you got to look at if the guys quit then your the equipment's left you know if they bring it back to you great right you don't have to go get it but you know I was watching one guy's YouTube channel, and I think they left his truck and trailer way out in, I don't know, Washington or somewhere. And he lives in the Midwest. So he had to have somebody go out there and drive the whole thing back, right? Bring it back. Um, so you have that problem, too. And then you don't know what you're getting when you when you go to get the truck. Or even if they bring it back, and when they bring it back, you don't know what you're, what you're going to see, right? Um I was wondering if I purchased a truck in January, if I would need an ELD installed the same day of purchase in order to buy a home after December 7th. No, you do not. Because it's not a commercial vehicle at that point. Um, you bought the truck. It's in transit. It's not for hire. So what you do is you stick not for hire signs on the side of it. You know, take get some white piece of paper, write not for hire, and slap them on the sides just in case. You'll have a temporary permit inside the window you stick there to get you home right temporary plate you could drive that home truck home uh, you're not under ELD regulation it's not a it's, it's not a commercial vehicle doing interstate work at that point um, so you can drive it just like you you could drive it you know even if you had an ELD it would be uh, personal conveyance right um, so yes, you can drive it all the way back to wherever your terminal is going to be or home, and then you put your ELD in it. You put your license plate on it, you sticker it, put your IFTA stickers on, and now at that point you must have the ELD inside that truck. Hope that answers your question. What's up, big face trucker? What's going on? Hey, send some of those big faces. All right, what's up, Chester? What's going on with you? Um, I did that with Convoy, and they really didn't give me an answer. On the time I asked if they can change times, they said no. So I said, thanks, and that's right. You know, if if they do these bundling, and it's an illegal bundle, you know, and whoever takes it, they should have their DOT number stripped from them. Right? If... That's if, you know, they're, they're a one-man show with their own authority because they know it's illegal. They know they're not, not supposed to do it, so they must be running on personal conveyance or something, right? Or before the time they're on logbook or whatever. They know it can't be done. Um, so they're doing it illegally. Uh, you know, but if, a, if it's a company and it's a contractor or driver, then, you know, if they get caught or whatever, if the company catches they should be, you know, written up and taken, you know, treated accordingly, right? Because you got to cover, you got to cover all the bases. Um, <laughs> Mr. Patana says, uh, what's your opinion on sonar or load board from Freightwaves? Um, never used it. Um, 
so I really don't have an opinion on it. Uh, I don't see a use for, you know, I, I got enough load boards that we use. Um, we can stay as busy as we want with what we have, right? Um, like I said, if, if I can't find loads for uh, the contractors that they call and say, hey, man, can you help me find a load? I got, if I can't find them on all the boards that I have, right, then that ain't going to work. Big Rig Radio Network. Is this Big Rig Radio Network? Yeah, who's this? Am I live on the air? I don't know. You tell me. Do I need to hit the dump button on you? Hey, get it ready. You got about 15 seconds of dump button, don't you? Yeah, I'll, I'll, dump, I'll throw you right on out. Well, I'll go ahead. There you go. There you go. <laughs> hey, what are you doing? I'm sitting here talking to you. What, what do you think I'm doing? Well, yeah, I know. What, what, what did you do with that trailer? What did I do with the trailer? Is this DL? No. Is this DL? It, no, this RD. Oh, RD. RD Trucking. He got a YouTube channel. RD Trucking. Um, no, the trailer. No. I just told him and told him, hey, you know, make sure this stuff is fixed. Um. So that way it's ready to go come the first of the year. So I went out there and I uh, double checked everything, right? Oh, so you're keeping that trailer. See, I couldn't figure that out from that last video. I you took the video down. No, I'm keeping that trailer. That That's my trailer. Um, oh. Yeah, just the, oh. truck, just the truck I'm turning back in because it's five years old. It's, it's time okay. is up. Yeah. I see. I would say, I would have took that trailer. Well, I know you would have. It's, it's sitting up there, um, getting the PM done on it, and a couple of uh, stuff fixed on it, so it's ready to roll. Well, there you go. Well, let me ask you something. And I won't have an answer, but go ahead. This, this, <laughs> yes, you will. This situation I'm in right now, do you think it would be a good idea for me to pick up a trailer? The situ you mean at the um, <clears throat> Blue Star? You know where I'm at. Just blap it all over the open airwaves. So everybody knows they can all call in and try and get me fired. They don't know where you're at. He he's at Millis. He's at Millis Transfer. Um, don't J tell him that either. JB Hunt. He's at JB Hunt. Um, JB Hunt. <laughs> yes, I would. In your situation, I would I would have a trailer just be for the extra money, and it's gonna you're actually gonna make more money, right? Uh, okay. For example. Well, yeah. For example, gross revenue wise, right? How much do you gross a month? Do you think you'll gross on an average? I don't even know yet. Depends on how I'm done. I'm hoping I'm gonna gross uh, close to fifteen thousand. All right, so you're gonna let's say you get frisky and you make fifteen thousand. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. Frisky. Right. So that's about that's a good grand extra money, right? Per month. So right. if you had a let's say you had a brand new trailer and it was six hundred bucks a month and the insurance was a hundred at seven hundred a month, you're gonna make three hundred more dollars in your pocket, plus you're gonna have all that equity build up. Plus, when I leave them, I got a trailer, so I can... Do you have a truck payment? Wherever. I, of course I got a truck payment. Good Lord. All right, so what is it? Huh? How much is it? How much is it? $35, 34 dollars Truck payment? Huh? That's your truck payment? That's my truck payment. Whew. He must be running in big, long nose trucks or something, you know. Yeah, that's big that's money. It. All right. So well, anyway. Big money. Let's say you did. I'm paying as much as I'm paying as much as Schneider's these drivers. Yeah. So let's say you did twenty thousand, right? Let's say you have a good month. You did twenty. Mm -hmm. 
right? Trader is going to bring in about 1400 right? And if it was a new one, let's say you paid 700 for insurance and trailer, that's 700 left over. Now your truck payment's what? 28 Right. So as long as you don't have a trailer, you're losing all that money. Yeah. Right? So a trailer, yeah, right, a trailer where you're at, Right, a trailer where you're at will pay for itself and some of your truck payment. That's the way I look at it. Yep, that's you, what I was thinking too. Yeah, and if you have a really good month, just, it can pay up to a quarter of the truck payment. Sometimes a half, depending on somebody's truck payment, right? Uh-huh, well, somebody's truck payment, right? Right. <laughs> and where you're at, they have a program... Um, that is a split interest rate, right? So you can, you can get a brand new one through there. Um, and as long as you stay with them, it's the lower interest rate. But then if you leave, you know, you take the trailer with you, then it goes to the higher interest rate. Oh. That's how that works. So basically, let's say the interest rate was 8%, right? As long as you were leased on. And then if you leave then that trailer interest rate, let's say it goes to 12%, right? They'll have a, a variation there. Because the reason why they do that is because their risk just went up because they, they can't just reach in and grab it out of your settlement. Right. So that's the problem, though, is that 12%, that might be kind of high interest. Well, yeah, like on a brand new trailer and stuff, you can get them between 6 and 8%. Right? So as long as you stayed there and they charge, let's say, eight, that's a pretty good deal, right? You're, it's, you're not going to get much better on the open market. You could get five to six or seven, depending on, you know, credit rating. But, you know, for them as a, as a you know, carrier, um, if they give eight, or they might even be cheaper than that now. I'm just going by, you know, 20-something years ago. You know what I mean? Um, right. Yeah, so, well, they might not even have that deal. No, they have that deal. They always have that deal. Oh, okay. It's through that five, you know, abbreviation letter word. Those, you know, that department. Because I can't say where you're at. Yep. Yeah. 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 I know what you're saying. Yeah. You just call them up and say, hey, you know, I'd like to buy a trailer. Fill out a little documentation. They'll tell you, you know, okay, the new ones are at this factory, blah, blah, blah. And you just go pick them up at the factory. Or buy a used well, one from I somewhere. Into that. What? Well, that's what else I'm thinking. Buy a used one from somewhere. The trailer will cost less. It'll pay more on my truck payment. Right. So if you buy if you buy and one that's, make sure you do this like though. Get a decent interest rate. Right, RD. But make sure you do this. If you buy a used one, make sure you buy one that's, you know, between five and seven years old. Don't go older than that because. Yeah. You do a lot of automotive um, capability, and so you got to have one ten years or newer for automotive freight. And you don't want to take yourself out of that game because right. they have some pretty good automotive freight. Yeah, I've checked into some of it. I haven't done any of it, but I've checked into some of it. But I don't want to be here forever anyway. I just kind of came here because I had to do something because I couldn't sit around and stare at truck and driveway no more. They irritate me on the percentage they take. Right. So, and you know, I'm do here in the near future. How how much uh, how much dropping? I tried like hell not to not to come to these people again, but here I am. Well, how much dropping hook do you do? Not a whole heck of a lot. I started out with a pretty good trailer, and now I got a pretty good piece of junk trailer because of dropping and hooking them. Right, so you don't do a lot. You don't do a lot. You do a lot more live load, live unload, right? Yeah, so, that's what I'm, and that's what I'm trying to stick with. Right, so like Snorlord said right here, he says, "Hey, there's about ten thousand trailers from Celadon hitting the market soon. You could get, you I could, know, you could be there to pick up. And that's what I'm thinking about. A good trailer, you know. And they do a lot of automotive, so them trailers got to be fairly new, yeah." Right, right, because they come across from Mexico and stuff like that. 
So they'll be set up. They'll be set up for automotive spec, right? Yeah. Yeah. Plus, you had Falcon. Well, they just be. went out. You know, they went out just a while ago this year. And they had a you know a couple thousand trailers. Yeah. So there's a lot of used trailers on the market. Yeah. Right. So I just need to find them, look around, and find them, find out where they're at. They might not even hit hit uh, hit the auction yet. Well, you can call the guy we use um, at TNT uh, Trailer Sales. Is that where he's? Is that where he's at TNT? You said. Yep, I'll put it on the screen, right there. Okay. Well, I'm not. Well, I'll get it later on the replay. TNT Trailer Sales in Wayne, Michigan. Ask for Mike. Right. Tell him you know you watch the show. We get nothing from the deal. Um, he's just a really nice guy. Uh, a few people already bought trailers from him. I know Eddie's on here. Uh, those guys call him all the time, you know, just to, you know, shoot the you-know-what with him. And uh, he does a really good job for you, you know, for you. He'll find the financing. He'll find what's right for you and get the trailer. And if there's a trailer on there you're looking at, and if it's not a really good trailer, he'll say, hey, I don't think you ought to buy that one. You know yeah. what I mean? He's looking out for you, right? Yeah. Um, if you really want it, want it, you know, he'll probably sell it to you. But he'll say, well, you know, this trailer over here is really in better shape because he knows where they came from, right? Yeah, I heard you talking about him doing that the other day with somebody. They went, he steered them away from a trailer and steered them toward another one. Yeah, because remember I was talking about that uh, black trailer for James that, you know, we're talking about because I had a picture of it with the shiny, right. yep. shiny front end and shiny, shiny, you know, all that stuff. Well... He called in. He called in for that trailer, and he says, "No, you really don't want that trailer." Um, so he got a different trailer. When he got out there and looked at it, he showed him everything about it, and he says, "Yeah, I'm glad you you know steered me away from that." So. Uh, yeah, he sounds like a pretty good guy to deal with. Sounds like a soft. I was yeah. wondering who he was. I was thinking about calling him, but yeah, that's what I think I'll do. Is I'll, I'll maybe I'll call him and talk to him a little bit about the used one first before I go with the other route you know yeah the hools the hools out here making jokes are you there yeah we're here you there okay all right yeah but y'all you're all digitizing i mean i don't know why because i got a good signal i'm out here right spooky part of illinois so i lose my signal well you know in illinois you never know what's going to happen in that place yes exactly it Kind of strange people hang out here in Illinois, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we, won't, we, won't, we won't say no names of no smoking, not creep, swilling truck drivers, but, you know. <laughs> no, the hool's going to get you. All right, all right. What's that? The hool. The hool's going to get you for making those comments. <laughs> the hool is it? Yeah. <laughs> I haven't watched my mirrors. Watch your mirrors. Pull, yeah, that's right. Pull your mirrors in when you go to bed at night. <laughs> All right, RD. We'll see All you, right. buddy. All right, man. Appreciate it. Later. Bye. Right, later. So that was RD, uh, and we don't know where he's. We don't know where he's contracted on to. You know, we don't know none of that stuff. <clears throat> So back to load boards, right? We showed some different load boards, but um, Eugene wanted to see the phone, you know, if I liked the phone or not, or how the phone was uh, doing. Well, this is the phone. This is the case, right? It's the case that comes in. Well, they give you the case with it, right? Is trucking up as good for single truck authority? Does it export invoices to QuickBooks? Um, Yes, they do have a. Let me let me bring that uh, website up. Um, let me see down here. I do believe somewhere in here they do have that.
I don't have QuickBooks, so I never use the function, right? So I'll have to look in here and find it. If anybody uses Trucking Office that uses the QuickBook function, chime in, right? Chime in. Data export. You haven't exported anything yet, right? So I say um, QuickBooks export feature. Um, so we'll show you the screen. Boom! Here's the screen. Right? So here it is. It says uh, how to enable the QuickBooks export feature, pro version only. Click on the profile at the top. With the premium buttons. Um, you can manage the premium features. The QuickBooks export feature also comes with fuel card import blah 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 um, and so forth and so forth right uh, connect to QuickBooks for your invoices click connect to QuickBooks and it'll open and redirect your QuickBooks account um, so it has all that red Raider right um, so it'll do that and you can export expenses and so forth and uh, your bank accounts and your data and all that good stuff. So there you go. It does have QuickBooks um, exporting of all the stuff on there you, that you just seen. So if you uh, want to try trucking office out, right? Then you could use our code and you get 10% off for life. So if you go to truckingoffice.com, you enter in that discount code, you will get that 10% off for life. So BRN 2018. And then as you grow, if you grow the company more than one truck, um, that discount really adds up because, you know, the price goes up as you grow, right? Because you're getting more and more data space and and so forth and so forth. And then if you do happen to do the ELD uh, part of it, um, then that even saves more money, right? So it does have the QuickBook uh, function for exporting. And I need to show that to Empty uh, Fuel Corp because he uses QuickBooks a lot too. So I don't think he knows that it has the uh, QuickBook function. So there you go. There it is. Let me get that off the screen. We're done with that. Done with the trailer. See you later, Hool. Get him out of there. Yes, you famous. Um, what percentage are the mega carriers in the industry? Um, Stone Earth says overtaxed are about 5%. So that's what our, our people don't understand. When they say, oh, the mega carriers are doing the mega carriers don't make up the industry, folks. They're a very, very small percentage of what makes up the trucking industry. It's mostly made up of independents. You know? That's what makes it up. So anyway, we are done for the day. We've been on here about 49 and a half minutes. Um, we're not deleting this video. We will leave this video up. It's got some good information on it. Um, check out 123 Load Board, right? Put in that code. You get some some free time to check it out, that kind of thing. Uh, you get all those great tools. Um, that profit calculator is really nice. And they do have some good uh, documentation uh Things you can snap shots of your bill, ladings, and all that, and uh, you know, a virtual filing cabinet, right? Digital filing cabinet uh, to store all your paperwork. So, the Hool says the locals, the day cabbers, and small operation are over the roads, uh, and then you have the big boys, right? And uh, Red Raider said he's signing up now. What else we got going on here?
All right, so that's about it, man. We got to get back to business. We got payroll to do uh, and some other stuff we have to take care of. And if you haven't signed up for the clearinghouse, make sure that you get that done before January, right? We're already signed up. I just got to go buy a um, packet, as they call it. Uh, I think it's like a dollar fifty a shot for how many drivers I need, and so I'll buy like a packet of twenty or something um, because that you're gonna need it when you check drivers for when you hire them and things like that, even contractors. Um, so I'll buy a packet, and then when you run out of the packet, you gotta buy another packet, right? So it's a money grab, right? It's a government money grab because everybody has to buy these packets and run the run the thing on the drivers they have right now. So if you have 8,000 drivers, you got to buy 8,000 driver packet and then this boom. So it's just a money, money, money grab is all it is. It's all it is. Um, that's about it. All right, thanks for watching. And... Uh, Over at Texas, Minnesota, before we leave, he says this. Friends of ours was asking about the so-called collapse in trucking. There isn't really a collapse in trucking. Um, what it is is a collapse in uh, companies that run right, people that are in charge of companies doing not-so-legal things, right? Because if you read the articles, and actually read what happened to a lot of these companies, it's all, a lot of it's mismanagement, or they were sold to investment companies that knew nothing about really trucking, um, and so forth. You know, if you do a lot of reading and, and seeing what really happened, that's what happened. And then guess what? Almost, most, most of all these companies are not spot market companies, they're contract companies, which means they had contract freight. Most of their freight was contract freight. Just to, you know, throw that out there, since if you read, like, the sell it on article, at the bottom, it says, oh, one of the things, main reason why they went out is because contract, or spot market freight was down, right? It was down. That's one of the, everybody always wants to blame it on something else. Um, that's right, Snowler, there's a collapse in common sense in trucking. And we see it all over, all over YouTube, right? All over. Um. And then what, what gets a lot of people in trouble is, you know, they, they like YouTube, they watch YouTube, and they watch all these channels, and, uh, you know, watch, watch closely where you get your trucking advice, or about trucking business and how to run a business, because, you know, you get the advice in some bad spots and you're in trouble, that's all, that's all we can say. Always do your due diligence, right? Always double check, triple check in business before you actually do something. Just don't go by somebody's word, right? Get out there and research it. Do the research. A lot of people don't want to do the research. All right. Somebody said something about coaching calls or something. I think I took that off the website. I don't know. I haven't been on the website in a while been busy doing other stuff all right so we got to go i got to get i don't know snow lord you get money today snow lord i think snow lord gets money today we gotta get payroll done get snow lord some money southbound jay i don't know he might get some money too i don't know if he had it to look and see if he uh delivered a load yeah and and uh don't tell people to abandon trucks that's not a good thing to do it is. It's horrible advice. It's not a good thing to do. You know, get the truck home, right? Get back to the terminal, get in your car, go home. So, what's up, Ronnie? So let's look at what Snorlord said. Let's say you're on with a company and they do that, right? They go bankrupt, they leave you. Let's say you have half of a tank of fuel and you live 800 miles away and you can only get 600 miles on this truck well you know what i'm gonna do 
I'm going to take my own money out of my pocket, and I'm going to stick it in the diesel tank, get it to the terminal, drop the truck off, right? It's going to be empty when I get there, but get it there because, look, if you're going to abandon the truck and you've got to buy yourself a bus ticket or you've got to buy a plane ticket or you've got to rent a car to get to your car, just take that money. You already got a vehicle that runs. You already got one that runs. Just drive it back to the wherever your terminal is, park it, and get in your car and go home. You know? That way, they can't see you abandoned none of that because, you know, let's look at it, right? A lot of these companies might go into bankruptcy, but it doesn't mean they won't come out on the other side of it, right? They could be doing debt reduction. They, who knows what they're doing, right? Or they could get bought out in the meantime and the doors stay open for a while. You know what I'm saying? You don't know. So that, you know, because if it hits the DAC report, you're going to play all kinds of, of trouble getting that off your, off your record. And when major companies see that, they don't even care. They don't even want to know why it was abandoned. If they see abandoned in a truck, they just go right on to the next applicant. Isn't that right, Snorlord? A lot of them big ones, they just, when they bring up the DAC report and it says abandonment, boom. They don't even look any further. They don't call. They don't ask. They just go on to the next candidate because there's a whole lot of people in line, right? So um, that could really hurt somebody in getting a job in the future. And then the jobs they'll get is going to be worse than where they're at because the only place it will take them is the ones that know they can take advantage of them because they know they can't go anywhere else because of that. It's kind of like the same thing with um, people that fail drug tests or to get DUIs and things like that or have uh, certain types of accidents out there. Um, you know, because if you have a certain type of accident, some, some companies are five years before they'll put you on, some are seven years, some are three years, um, you know, so there you go. All right, Brad. Uh, well, Juan, what's up, Juan? California Juan, what's up going on, man? You still at the, the, the big old pumpkin patch, um, run those containers? I remember working... OTR for a mega carrier, and I wasn't making a lot. Money was very tight, so how could you use money if they don't have it? Um, so I could see why people would abandon the trucks, he says. Well, Juan, um, that's true, right? That is true. And so, you know, it depends on the circumstances, right? It depends on the circumstances. Uh, how is the guy going to get home, right? How is he going to get home? Uh, you know, has he got family to that? Does he got people that's going to help him, right? So if someone's going to rent him a car or whatever, they could just also just shoot money to put fuel in the tank and he could drive it home that way too. Could he not? I mean, could they not? I'm just looking at it at the least possible way where you wouldn't have to abandon the truck. If it gets to that point and that's, all you, that's the only choice you have, then that's the choice you have, right? But you should you should go out of your way to, you know, I'm going to drive that thing home if I can. I'm going to get it back to the terminal where my car is. That's what I'm going to try to do in that situation. Right? But you got to think, a lot of these big companies, when they go out of business, there are signs that lead up to that. And drivers, if they're not, you know, I'm always looking to see what the companies are doing when I've worked at them. And I would see signs of different things. That's like when I was at the Big Blue Star and uh, Jeff Crow was CEO. When he stepped down and Gherkins came in, a lot of things started changing. You, you started to see the change of where that company was going and what their main focus was on. And, uh, you know, was it the BCO? Was it the agents? You know, the brokers, right, agents? You know, where was their main focus turning to? And you could see the shift, right? You could see the shift, and you could see that, you know, it might be time to start looking somewhere else. But the people that don't pay no attention of their business or what they're doing, even if they're a company driver, or a company guy, they're the ones that get caught 
you know, holding the bag, right? Because they're not paying attention. Right? Yeah, signs to look for. Signs to look for. Uh, you know, if if the, you know, you go, you say, hey, you know, I'm coming in for maintenance. They said, no, you know, we're not, uh, you, you know, we're going to extend the maintenance level out. Well, why are they extend the maintenance level out all of a sudden if they, you know, we're doing it all this time? Probably because maybe they don't have the money. They're running low on money. It tells you a sign. If the equipment starts getting worse, they're not taking care of the equipment, then you know they're, something's not right. Something's not right. There, I can guarantee you, if you worked at one of those companies that went out this year, that you would have seen signs coming, right? Just like if uh, I hear these guys, right, they're driving, and they say, well, I didn't get a paycheck this week. But he tells me, that, you know, and they're working for, let's say, an independent, right? And they're driving, you know, say a guy's got three trucks. They're driving one of his trucks. They say, oh, well, you know, we're going to catch you next week because money's kind of tight. And then they go two weeks out of paycheck. Guess what? I'm going somewhere else. I'm finding somewhere else to go because that's a sign that, hey, they don't have no money. Right? But, but guys will stay there, which makes really no sense. But they will do it. Most selling on trucks were not getting maintained. So that's a sign, right? That's a sign that a company has problems. Is when the maintenance on the trucks start going, the trailer maintenance starts going, you see there's a problem. So you got to start thinking, you know, maybe it's time to move to another company before it happens. Because you can see signs. Steve says, uh, I learned that uh, years ago with a company that I worked for, liquidating assets and longtime employees dragging up suddenly. Right. Right, Steve. Exactly right. When you start seeing them selling off assets, closing terminals, doing other things, um, they're trying to get money, right? They're trying to s slim down for a reason. There's something going on in the company. What's GNC Family Trucking? What's going on? Uh, right, right, GNC. Everyone jumped the gun on Celadon. Issue Celadon is trying to do the right uh, thing for drivers, even if it still benefits them. Right. Um, I had heard that they turned the fuel cards back on, right? Because oh, they turned the fuel cards off. And then you hear a report that they turned the fuel cards back on so people can get home. Um, you know, so it's. It's not as bad as what, you know, YouTube is going to make it out to be, right? Uh, if someone needs help, yes, right? We're all there to try to help them, right? Um, because we're all in the same industry, and it could happen to any of us, right, uh, that are out there. But, the you know, the, what I don't understand is any company... If you know you're in trouble, and you know closing the doors is imminent, right? It's, it's coming soon, or it's coming, like, in three days or whatever, you know, you know this. Why not send the message out and say, look, you know, this is what's happened. This is the thing. You know, after everyone delivers their loads up, do not take no load after this point. Get that truck and trailer to, you know, X, Y, or Z, and, you know, we'll have a... A ticket there for you to get home or bring the truck to this location where your car is you know that's the right thing for companies to do right that way it gives a guy enough time to okay I'm gonna run this load I got the next load takes me back to the terminal and they got time to apply for another carrier or whatever and that way they don't miss a lot of paychecks and things like that because you know, a lot of people live paycheck to paycheck um, so if, you know if a company really has any integrity uh, you know, that's what you do, right? That's what you do. Uh, they did plus offering 500 to bring the truck back. Right, right. You know, what a lot of people don't, re they, you know, they want to report on nothing, right? They don't want to report on it, but, but doom and gloom type of stuff. And 
most of those companies want those trucks back because they don't want to have to pay, right? Because when they go through the bankruptcy and they go and all this money, you know, is going to be accounted for, and <clears throat> then they got to get the equipment back, and it's hard more money to pay somebody else to go get that equipment than having their own driver bring it back. So, you know, they might pay money like that. Uh, all right, so we're out of here. We got to get other stuff done besides YouTube. All right, thanks for watching. Remember, uh, one, two, three, load board. That's the code. If you want to try it out, um, it's right there. And for the guys that uh, you know want a good funding agent, call Thunder Funding. Right, call them up. There's their phone number. Right there. And you know, make sure you ask for Scott or Willie. Tell them we sent you, and you'll get you'll receive a bonus on your first funding. So, and then anybody wants to do you know a trailer, used trailer, a new trailer, call Mike at TNT. Right, call him up. He's right here. He'll he'll treat you right and get you into a trailer that you that you actually can use and need, and not something you really don't need. Um, he'll look out for you. So that's that right there. And then, of course, you know, we have Trucking Office, and we just had their code up and all that good stuff for those guys. All right, so thanks for watching, and we will see you all at a different time, right? Should we do an after show show? I don't know. What do you think? Thumbs up? Thumbs down?